In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, I'd like to show you how to place a logo on a screen and make it spin, but not in a conventional way. If we take an object file that's a logo, here I'm taking a PNG, and drag it down to track number two, we can place it on top of our video. I'm going to resize it a little bit. And now if I want to take this object and make it spin, I only have one option in my PIP designer. So if I double click on that, I do have a object property called rotation. And I can move to the beginning of the clip and click a diamond on the rotation value. Then I can move a little ways in and I can actually rotate it by spinning it around the green circle with the mouse. And I can go perhaps 180 degrees or 360. And now I'm able to spin my logo in real time on the screen. But I find that doing it this way is a little bit confusing because it's hard to read the text while it's rotating in that direction. I would rather have it rotate on a different axis, and I can't do that in the PIP Designer in CyberLink PowerDirector. Let me show you another option that we have. I'm going to delete that track. Now this is for people who have PowerDirector Ultimate or PowerDirector 365, so what I'm going to do in this case is move to my title room and click on the T on the left. And then to make it easy to find, I'll go from the all content, drag my slider down to new blue, and I have Titler Pro. I'm going to drag that down to track number two. And now I'm going to lengthen this so that the duration of my title track matches the duration of my video. And the line turns blue when they're the exact same duration. And then I'm going to highlight it. I see this is 18 seconds and 10 frames. So I'll double click on it to get into my Tidler Pro design tool. Now that I'm into Tidler Pro, the first thing I want to do is change the duration. The default is 8 seconds. So I need to edit the value in the upper right corner and change it to 18 seconds and I need to go from 0 frames to 10 frames. Now my title will be the same length as the video it accompanies. Next thing I'm going to do is take the enter text and highlight it and I'm going to delete it because in this case I'm not using a text. I'm going to import an object which is my logo. I'll click on the file menu in the upper left corner and click on the import image. That will take me to my file system. I'll navigate where I want to go and double click on the icon. It, by default, it loads it in the center of the screen. Let's do some work with it. I can either click on the object on the preview screen or I can click on the track. We'll move it a little bit to the upper left. And then I want to rotate it, but not in the conventional way. First of all, before I do anything, I want to lock in my scale by clicking the padlock on the left side by X, Y, and Z under scale. Once I've locked in my scale, the next thing I want to do is turn on my keyframing. So I'll click the small box at the bottom, and that will give me a larger panel to work with. And it sets a keyframe on the very first frame of my object, which it simply calls shape. Now I have a keyframe set, we're going to change a rotational value. What I'd like to do is start out with it flat. So I'm going to take the X value and turn this way. And you can navigate up and down using the arrows to get precisely what you want. And when all you see is green lines straight in a row, that tells you you're perfectly flat or essentially invisible. So I'll set that keyframe there, then we'll move three seconds in, and then I'll go back to my full size. And what I find if I want to get precise is I drag across, and I can type, in this case, I type a zero, and I know it's perfectly flat. So if I go to the beginning and play this, we see it rotating in on the X value. And you could rotate it out as well. 
but I find this to be a nice little trick that you can use in Tyler Pro to change the way in which the title or logo in this case happens to appear on the screen. Let's try another one. Let's uh, change it. We'll go back to the first keyframe and to move between keyframes the easiest way is to click on the keyframe at the bottom in the panel that will get you exactly there. I'm going to change the value here. Go back to my rotational value. Drag across it and set it to zero. Now what I want to do is look on the Y value. I'll take the Y value and I can drag and we'll start out with this one being sideways and again we want to tweak it so we can simply move the up and down arrows until the green lines are exactly on top of each other. That means you can't see it. And then it will go back to a Y value of normal when I get to the next keyframe and let's play this. We'll go back to the first frame and play it and now it rotates the other way. So you can rotate horizontally or vertically by using this technique on your logo. What I'd like to do now is show you another way in which you can make even more interesting modifications by using the mouse. I've deleted the keyframe by clicking on the minus so I only have the first keyframe and I set all the rotational values to zero. Now if I want to make a rather unique spin of my logo, I can click on the globe and the globe will give me this circle. The circle tells me I'm working in three dimensions. So now I can take the mouse once the globe and the circle are lit and I can move this in any one of three dimensions. And for example, I can start with my logo looking like this, move into my project, set another keyframe by clicking on the plus key above the small box in the lower left panel and now I can rotate it slightly differently. I can also at this keyframe change the location. I can take the click off of here and actually move it over on this location and now if I look at the, how it moves from one point to another I see that I'm actually moving this in three dimensions and moving it horizontally across the screen as well. Those are no limit to what you can do if you want to modify the look and feel of a logo on your screen. The one thing I would caution you about is it works best if you keep the text visible. And there are all kinds of spin maneuvers you can do that are impressive, but they may be more distracting than helpful. Here is a short example of using this kind of logo on your screen.